As the People's Democratic Party crisis in Edo State lingers, Governor Nyesum Wiki apologizes to Adams Oshomole, calls Governor Godwin Obasaki a serial betrayer and an ingrate. And Governor Udomi Manuel and former Deputy Governor of Akwaibom State Chris Ekbeyong differ on who God has chosen to rule Akwaibom come 2023. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Kong. Edo State Chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Colonel David Imusi, retired, has said his party will capitalize on the disarray in the People's Democratic Party to take over power in the state. Imusi said the APC is well organized and that those causing problems left their own volition or of their own volition and are now trying to destroy the party, sheltering them. Meanwhile, Governor Nyesum Wike of River State has described his Ado counterpart, Godwin Obasaki, as a serial betrayer and an ingrate. Well, joining us to discuss this is um, Liberos Oshoma. He is the head attorney at Liberos Oshoma um, Chambers. And also joining us is the local government chairman of Equiri Local Government in River State, Samuel Mwanasike. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Great. Um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with you because you, you know a little more about Edo state politics and all the, in, in, you know, the internal drama that's going on. Um, I want to, before, I, before I, I post my first question, I want to take you back to a conversation that was had on Plus Politics um, about the elections in Edo state um, with Governor Ayo Fayashi, former governor of Ekiti State, what he said about the relationship between um, the governor of Edo State and Governor Wishke. Let's take a let's take a listen to that video, and when we come back, we'll break it down. Hmm. Finally, I won't be surprised. Obaseki will win this election hmm. because Oshiomele too is a very bad man. Obaseki may win this election, but, but if he wins this election, I will not be surprised if Obaseki turns his back. On the likes of my friend Wiki and others, who are who have who they, they are fighting to that nail for him. But we should remember that I said it. That time, this video, I pray Obaseki will not allow us to play this video. Because those of the people in the PDP now, mm. he must keep his agreement with them. He must keep his agreement with them because they kept the party before it's coming. Well, that was uh, the former governor of Ekiti State. Um, and he, he said in the video that he hopes that this video does not get played. But let's look at the important thing that he stated in the video. Uh, he talked about the fact that um, the party that's sheltering him, of course, which is the PDP, um, will definitely have problems in the future. Um, does IFIOSHA seem like a prophet of doom to you? Yeah. Uh, everybody, everybody at that time, knew that um, this was what was going to play out, you know, uh, at the end of the day. Except um, you are not a, a follower of the event. Uh, for those that were following the event, they knew that definitely this would happen. Mind you, it was exactly two years into the administration of um, uh, Obaseki in his first term that he started having problems with Oshomole. After all, he was already a governor before Wiki assisted him, you know, to win second term. Anything Wiki did for Obaseki, Oshomole did times two. And at the end of the day, Obaseki said Oshomole wanted to become the uh, godfather, and then we all knew what happened. So when Wiki came and when he went to take shelter in PDP and he was running Eta Sketa, he went to Wiki, went to Dom Emmanuel, went to Kowa. Um, a lot of people just felt well. Even some members of the uh, APC said they were happy. Let them go to, let even PDP win the election and they let PDP have a taste of what APC were complaining of. And so if you're a follower of the event at that time, you definitely, certainly will know that this would happen. Do you know why? Also, Obaseki came into the party with his uh, deputy governor, his chief of staff, and the secretary to the government. Those are the first four, you know, political positions 
the first four head of executive position that um, you can you will have you can occupy, and then the House of Assembly members that didn't agree with him, he practically chased out of Benin. So having the government, the structure of the government intact, it was only also convenient for those people who were outside or who gave him shelter to also ask for a bite of uh, the cherry. And then without giving them a bite of the cherry and consistently asking them to harmonize and then also include him and his team in the executive membership of the party was definitely going to create a problem. And then uh, Wiki being a man who does not take uh, punches lying low. So it was bound to happen. And then um, um, what we are seeing now is just, um, uh, what do you call it, um, a, a meal that had been prepared long ago that um, unfortunately people did know how it was prepared. And, and so I'm not surprised really that all of this is playing out. It's interesting um, that Governor Wike is taking this very personally, just as you have said. I mean, uh, it's the same blow, according to you, that was dealt to the former Edo State governor. And now Governor Wike uh, is so interested in the matter. But let's look at what's at the core. Um, there was a video who, that was making rounds also of the deputy governor speaking with so much authority. Uh, and, and many people have wondered where he got that type of temerity, being that, you know, in Nigerian politics, the vice, uh, the vice presidents, the deputy governors are always yes men. But in this case, um, the deputy governor seems to be um, very vocal. And this is one of the things that uh, the River State government, governor spoke against. He actually did wonder where he was getting his guts from. But then there are those who are wondering why um, Shwaibu is that vocal. Could he be interested in the ticket for the next uh, governorship race? Uh, I can tell you for free that uh, there's the rumor that Shwaibu is interested in uh, becoming the Gitness governor. Unconfirmed rumor. I don't know how true that is. But also, as for being vocal, Philip Shabu is not a man who has never been, who has not, he has always been vocal in as far as Edo State politics is concerned. Right from his days, uh, um, when he, you know, strongly supported Oshomole, he's always been very, very, very vocal. And then also, if you look at the team, really, Philip Shabu and the secretary to the state government, Ogi, are the politicians in the team. Obaseki was sold as a technocrat, and so he really didn't have political base. Those, the people that had political base were Obaseki from uh, Edo North and Ogi from Edo South, the same constituency with um, Obaseki. Uh, Ogi is the uh, barrister, is the uh, secretary of the state government, but Ogi has been on the quiet side. And um, uh, Philip, being the vociferous one, has consistently, you know, being the, 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 what do you call it, uh, the war chest of uh, the team. And then, mind you also, Philip is this vocal because the main crisis also is in his um, constituency. Mind you, because the leader of the PDP that is at the heart of all of this is Dan Obi, Chief Dan Obi. Chief Dan Obi is from the same constituency with Philip. Chief Dan Obi is from the, it's, Dan Obi is from um, uh, Obuna in Esako Central, Philip is from Jetu in Esako uh, West. And their houses are not far apart in Jetu. Mm. So the both of them are struggling for the same meat in the same pot. So that's why you see Philip this very vocal. But also that said, uh, I do not like the fact that uh, deputy governors are relegated in Nigeria. And um, I also think that an aggrieved member should have a right to complain. It is also now left for the party to say whether well, your complaints are either genuine or not genuine. To silence an aggrieved member, for me, it is not um, a way to go in politics. After all, politics is, a, is said to be a game of no. Interesting. Um, Honorable Wanusike, you are a party man here. Let's um, throw the next question to you. Uh, we see that Governor Wiki is in the thick of this conversation. Before now, it was uh, an argument within the PDP, and we saw um, Yocha Ayu in Edo State trying to douse the tension, but we do not know how well that worked out. But then Governor Wike is he caught in a war of wars with not just the deputy governor, but the, dep uh, the, the state governor himself, who's also trying to shield his deputy governor. Why is Governor Wike, in your 
uh, position, uh, rather, in you, from your perspective, so in interested in Edo state politics? Well, um, uh, I want to say here clearly that uh, Nigeria has come to a place where we should be building strong institutions, not strong men. For me, Governor Zeboe Sunwike was nominated by the People's Democratic Party to be the chairman of that election. And if you remember all that played out, the threat to his life, the intimidation from the All Progressive Congress, and all the late night meetings, abandoning job in River State and making sure campaigns are held in the Doe State just to support a Niger Delta man that is considered abandoned under the rain, a man that has been pushed out from his original home. He needed shelter. And so, Kovrezo Boy is a is a man that has a large heart to accommodate people, most especially when you're in crisis. If you come to the university, a member of APC, and Joy Nune had a crisis with the minister for Niger Delta, Ababio. And Governor Zouke said, no, she's a river woman. I'll stand up for her. So for us, what Governor Zouke is trying to say, the People's Democratic Party is considered as the alternative to what is happening today in the center, the maladministration of the All Progressive Congress. And we're being careful. Mr. Wanasika, are you still there? Party, I'm there, I'm here. Go ahead. That we're, not, we're a political party that does not keep to agreement. We don't understand why Philip Shaibu and Obaseki will want us to change the goalposts at the middle of a match. Before they came to People's Democratic Party to seek for help, we have already conducted congresses at the world level, at the local government level, and at the state level. Officers have won election and have emerged. In fact, we had aspirants who were preparing for Congress to be candidates of our party few weeks to our election before we had to speak to our people. Even some of them threatened to go to court. You follow the incident. In fact, when Fire Oshie made that prediction, today Fire has been vindicated. And that's why Governor Zowicki had to apologize to Shomele. Because somebody told him, look, this man, you are doing everything to help. You don't know him. After helping him, you will understand who he truly really is. Today, Oshomele has been vindicated. What Philip Shaibu is asking for is to own a structure that will help him take over from Obaseki. So you are telling us that the People's Democratic Party should throw away our structure because Oshomele said he came from APC, which is what chairman. Yesterday on a live television program in TVC, he said he came from APC with his work chairman. He came from APC with his local government chairman. He came from APC with his state chairman. So why would they be left out? Why is he deputy governor under PDP? That is not a member of PDP. That the only person that is a member of PDP is the governor. That him is not accepted in PDP. So he will go elsewhere. We, in the People's Democratic Party, were people of the rule of law. As the boy is a wiki, is a live venture. He will always tell you, you cannot manage democracy without the rule of law. If you follow the boy with that incident, he will say, whether the law is against me, let it be against me, but let the law be the law. Okay. We operate the democracy in Nigeria on three legs. The constitution of your party, the electoral act, and the constitution of Nigeria. So why would you want us to chase away those who want congresses genuinely? Because they gave a helping hand to come and seek their umbrella to win the election. So it's not a crime to help a brother that's in need. For us, we don't care whether Obaseki is loyal to Philip Shaibu or Philip Shaibu is a politician of Obaseki, is a technocrat. It's not our business. Our business is clearly you made a promise, you had an agreement with people. Keep to that agreement. Because Nigerians want to see that PDP is not like APC. That did not keep to the agreements they had with Nigeria in 2015. 
I'm more curious as to, yes, of course, you have made the, your position as the PDP to us, but in opening your doors to people from the APC, the likes of Philip Scheibel and every other person that came with him, I listened to many of his conversations before he went on TBC. He spoke about the fact that they have not yet been settled in, in the party. They, they, they don't feel welcomed within the party. And this is a question I always ask. How do you welcome people into your party without settling them or making sure that they feel at home? And I'm not in any way saying that you should break down your structures, but how do you get people? I mean, of course, I'm sure the PDP wants more people to join the party, but how do you keep those people within the party if we have issues like Mer this Meran, coming up every other day? Miran, Miran, let me, Miran, let me quickly say something here, quickly, please. Hello. I'm listening. Miran, can you can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. See, when when Philip Shaibu and Obaseki came into the party, the Philip uh, Obaseki is the governor. That is the number one seat in the states. Philip is the deputy governor. The secretary to the state government is Ogio Sarodio. The staff, chief of staff is um, uh, Osaik Bobo. These are key positions in the states. So, of all of these key positions, they are occupied by the APC, the Campis. No position was relinquished for the PDP. How do you think the PDP will feel? You now ask them, you've taken the juicy ones. You know, here we like the juicy and non-juicy. You've taken the juicy positions in the executive. The House of Assembly positions, you have also refused to relinquish. You have about nine members out of 20, uh, three, 24 members sitting. And then you now say the executive positions in the party should also be relinquished for you. When you didn't relinquish number one, number two, number three, and then assistance. So he who comes to equity must come with clean hands. So really, let's be fair here. I think Obaseki and Philip didn't enter into this race with clean hands. So, and against the backdrop of his antecedents coming from the APC and his behavior, also the PDP also definitely will be circumspect. And look, if we allow this man to have his way, he will overrun us and maybe tomorrow take away the structure and go back to where he's coming from. So, for me, I, why they have you know, the right to complain I always believe in complain. You, nobody should shout you down. But also, they also should be fair in, in giving before they ask to, to take. Interesting. Back to you, Mr. Wanoshiki. I spoke with the deputy uh, PDP chairman last week, Friday, if I'm not mistaken, on this issue. And he kept saying, I remember, it was very, he was very tight-lipped about you know, the major issues in the party, but he kept saying that what was happening within the party uh, because of a few people who are not necessarily members of the party, who are interested in positions for 2023. Um, he, that's what she kept saying. But let's talk about the reality on ground. Liboris has said that, to be fair here, um, you know, the PDP has not been dealt you know, a good hand. But is the PDP in Edo State ready to lose all of these people that came with Governor Basaki if, worse, if it comes down to it? Let me put it that way. Mr. Wanasiki, can you hear me? Yes. Um, see, I, I didn't hear the last part because I so I'm, I'm asking. Let me just say. I'm asking if is the PDP ready to lose the governor and those who came with him, or the deputy governor, because he kept saying it over and over in uh, one of those events, saying that they he would that they they're not settled, so they're ready to go back to where they will be they will feel more welcome. So, how ready is the PDP to let go of all those people that they had welcomed with pomp and ceremony into the party? First of all, the Supreme Court has settled this matter. Are you with me? I can hear you. The Supreme Court has settled this matter. The Supreme Court has said that this political party that wins election. And Obaseki and Chris Aibu, they are aware that it's the People's Democratic Party that won the election in the last election in those states. And so we're asking them if they know that they want to test 
the will of the laws of Nigeria. They make the move they want to make. We are asking them to make the move they want to make. You see, when a man has had a meeting behind closed doors, he will want to look for reasons to throw to the public why he's taking the steps he's taking. For us, we are not bothered about that. But we will not change the goalposts at the middle of the match. I have said here, yeah, democracy in Nigeria is in three strengths. One, the constitution of the party. Two, the electoral act. Three, the constitution of Nigeria. If the Supreme Court have said that it's the People's Democratic Party that won the election, and Obaseki and Lishaibu, please want to throw caution to the winds, they should take the steps for every action that is equal and opposite reaction. So we're not worried. For us, we cannot do what our laws will not allow us to do. Because a man believes that he wants a structure that will enthrone him to take over from his boss, the governor. See, let me tell you, man. Any man that cannot manage his family cannot manage the community or the society. Obaseki is just acting funny. As a sitting governor, a governor that is the leader of the party, he is the leader of the party. He knows that as a leader of the party, if you take care of your party properly, you won't even need anybody to tell you whether you want structure or not. Structure will come to you. The structure will come to you. When you pour sugar in the floor and walk away, the next morning, no matter how safe Canada that has it, ants will appear from nowhere around that sugar. It's a natural law of justice. So the People's Democratic Party will not change their rules to go and conduct another Congress or to hold a meeting to negotiate so that Obaseki SWAT chairman or Supreme Shaibu SWAT chairman in his village will now have take a position so that he will not feel comfortable. How? You have everything. You have the government house. You have the funds. You have all the position. All the juice position belongs to you. Yet the little one that people want genuinely after following the rule of law, you want to take it from them because they made the mistake of allowing you use their platform to run election. I've never seen this kind of thing. I'm curious. In uh, and I know and that... this is in Nigeria we don't want to have. I, I know that you might not be in the right position to answer this question, but where was the PDP when Governor Godwin Obaseki uh, took over the House of Assembly and only nine people were allowed to sit for as long as possible? Where was the PDP... Sorry, I, didn't hear, I, I, I didn't hear that part. I didn't hear that part. I didn't hear that part. Yeah, I'm asking, where was the PDP when the governor took over the House of Assembly? Remember that standoff. Where was the PDP to make sure that everybody was allowed some form of fair here? We still know how the House of Assembly, um, you know, was divided on this matter. If there was fair hearing somewhat, I'm guessing that the PDP would not be at this crossroad where we are today. I'm just wondering no, why, why Governor Wike oh, oh. waited till now to speak on no, the issues members, within the party. No, the members, the members that were excluded were not PD, are not PDP members. I know, they are I, all know. APC members. I know. I know this, but I'm saying no. you cannot also have a house that has 20-something members, but just nine people were in that house sitting. Where is the rule of law here? Because now someone wanted to is referring to the rule of law, but why was the rule of law not applied at that time? When, when go back to all your clips. Go back to all your clips. When they had the crisis in the state house of assembly, go back to your clips. The PDP had a stand on it when they had their crisis before they were kicked out of their party because Oshomele was quote-unquote the godfather so it is not our business what happened in their party but but then it's your business now what, what? we is, in the people's democratic party we in the people's democratic party wanted a situation where we will liberate the, those state people. Our ambition and mission, why we accommodated Obaseki and his people, was because we saw in Oshomene a man who is supposed wanting to perpetuate himself like the Ashuaju of Lagos. And we said, it can't happen in Edo State. That is where you had that slogan, Edo is not Lagos. So the truth of the matter is that this question has nothing to do with what we are discussing now. No, that, I'll tell you why I'm asking the question. I, 
I was on, I wasn't asking it in favor of the APC, by the way. I, you kept talking about the fact that he's high-handed now. Rule of law. And, I, and I'm yes, and the rule of law. And I'm saying, but the rule of law needs to apply whether it's the APC or the PDP, so that there's fair hearing. So why is the PDP crime foul now and talking about the rule of law if that had not been applicable from the get-go? That's why I was asking. No, we're not crying. Although we're not crying foul, nothing has gone wrong as far as we are concerned. We will not change the goalposts in the middle of a match. It is clear what congresses have happened, EJ congresses have happened, state congresses have happened. You can't turn them because you're governor. It's not possible. Okay. If they were smart, they will wait for another opportunity to come so that they will ask those their persons who they prefer that will do their bidding to try their hands in congresses. If a governor cannot win a congress, why do you want us to give structure? Did that somebody structure? Did anybody that some structure in River State? Did anybody that somebody structure in this nation? You contest by the provision of the constitution of your party in in which in accordance with the electoral act and the constitution of Nigeria. If you win, you become the world chairman. If you win, you become the local government chairman. If you okay. win, you become the state chairman. Okay. Quickly, I want to talk about Governor Wike before I go back to Liboris. Um, Governor Wike seems to have his hands full. Recently, he's, he was um, hitting hard at the Eboin State Governor. Now it's a Basaki. Uh, the other day, it was uh, the vice, uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. Uh, he uh, seemed to be uh, apprehending him for a statement that was credited to him about the fact that he was was going to be able to get the PDP's ticket come 2023. Um, there are also rumors. Uh, we don't we don't want to also pay any attention to those rumors. But is the is the governor of River State interested in running for presidency come 2023? Okay, now, like, is Mr. Wanusike, are you there? Uh, I think we lost that connection. Uh, I'm going to come back to you, Liberos. Liberos, how do you see this end? How do you see this ending uh, with all the drama that's going on? Because I did ask a question to Samuel Wanusike: If the governor or the deputy governor decides to take all his people back to the APC, um, does the PDP stand a chance come 2023? Uh, before I answer that question, let me first and foremost let you know that uh, those state had never really been a state that is controlled by one, one party. Uh, the PDP had um, two senators. Even while Obaseki was in um, uh, was the governor, uh, the PDP had um, two senators. The senator representing Obaseki's constituency was in the PDP. Uh, the PDP also had... Um, the House was clearly equally divided. You know, the PDP also had um, some members of the House of Reps. So, it is a party that um, had strong food, consistently had strong footing in um, in Edo State. Why the APC controlled one Senate in the that's a Shomolese uh, senatorial zone. But that said, I do not think that um, Obaseki at this stage, um, against the backdrop of the judgment in uh, Umahi's case, and the fact that that judgment has been unresolved at the Supreme Court, I do not think that Obaseki will want to take a dive. You know. Uh, headlong, you know, into another party at this point. He would want to watch out to the turn of event. That was why I think also he wasn't the one that spoke. Uh, he's had to use his um, uh, deputy as a poster boy to complain about how they were treated because um, I, I originally would have felt that, you know, um, the the complaint would have been coming from the leader. And like uh, one Osiki has said truly, if you treat your people well, they, nobody will. You won't beg anybody for structure. They will naturally gravitate towards you, and then nobody will be looking in the direction of um, yes, some wiki. But then another thing is, I do not also like. Um, these are my personal opinion, though. I also do not like um, governor yes, some wiki's um, approach to these issues. You know, there are more civil ways of handling these um, issues instead of this uh, resort to who is who is his father kind of um, language. This, for me, shouldn't be coming from leaders that we reverence, that we hold in high esteem. You know, we should, we should at some point let them know that, look, there are better ways. There are more refined ways of, of, of you know, um, addressing these issues rather than this resort to, 
you know, gutter language. Uh, okay. Uh, but by and large, really, you would say that Wiki, you know, came to the rescue. PDP actually came to the rescue of Obaseki when he needed it most. Uh, but that didn't come at a, that didn't come at uh, no cost. It also was at a cost to Obaseki. Okay. And um, what is playing out now is that it shows that the memorandum was not properly tied it up before they went into that agreement. And that is why we have seen all of this fall out. Okay, Mr. Wanashike, quickly before we go, would you like to quickly respond to the last question that I had because we're wrapping up. We lost you for a second. Uh, and there, there he goes again. Well, I want to say thank you. Samuel Wanasiki is the executive chairman of Query Local Government Area in River State. Libora Soshoma is the head attorney at Libora Soshoma Chambers. Thank you so much, Libora, for being part of the conversation. My pleasure. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we discuss Aquaibom state politics and who God has supposedly chosen to lead the government come 2023.